in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed there is a biblical requirement for accessing deliverance from God. If it is God you seek deliverance from, there is a condition that all men are mandated to assume. There is a posture that you must attain unto in the spirit in order to access deliverance from God. And that posture is humility and submission. Please write it down. Deliverance in the kingdom and in the spirit is only for men and women who understand the power of humility and understand the power of submission. You must come to a point where you acknowledge the reality of your human limitation outside of the help and the mercies of God. It is called brokenness in one word. First Peter chapter 5, please, from verse 6 and 7. First Peter 5, 6 and 7. Please write it and look up. The Bible says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due season. Uh -huh. Casting all your cares upon him because he cared for you. Are we together? Do you have that down? James 4, 7. James 4, 7. Submit yourself therefore to God submit yourself to god then he says resist the devil don't come and resist the devil when you are not submitted to god he says resist the devil and he will flee your submission first your humility first you want to access deliverance you must come to a point where you admit and acknowledge that outside of the help of the mighty god i do not even know the tendencies that are enshrined in my own heart and you must be able to uh, to admit it unashamedly that except god helps me Vain is the help of man, including my own self. Is someone learning now? This is very powerful. Many people want to experience that deliverance from God, but they are yet to come to a recognition that they are insufficient in themselves. Here's how the Bible puts it. It says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves. He says, our sufficiency is of God. What is sufficiency? The ability to always rise to the occasion. The ability to be without disappointment. You always are able to rise to the occasion. He's saying when you see that we are always full of capacity, it is not as though we attained it by our own power. We have outsourced a technology through our brokenness where we draw strength from God. Humility and submission. Listen to me. You want to experience the reality of that scripture to be delivered from evil? I can tell you that humility and submission to the governing authority of the Christ is a fundamental requirement if you will experience perpetual deliverance. Are we together? The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous, not a man, the righteous run it to it. You first have to admit that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and that until you run to it, you are not saved. We live in a world where it's marketable to be proud, it's marketable to sound self-sufficient, as though outside of the assistance of the Christ, we are able to make it on our own and by ourselves. Even Jesus Christ said, I can of my own do nothing. Is that in your Bible? I can. He declared his vulnerability without fear and without shame. Now, please write this down. Deliverance from God is based on a response system we're going to pray now 
deliverance obtaining deliverance from God is based on a response system that means deliverance does not just come except it is a response number one deliverance comes as a response to a cry for mercy please write it down deliverance comes to the saints from God as a response to a cry for mercy I said deliverance from God is based on a response system every time you see deliverance in the earth it came as a response something there was a reaction from the earth and then God responded to it a response to a cry for mercy Lamentations 3 22 Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 22. It says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Hallelujah. Because his compassions fail not. A response to a cry for mercy. There is something that always happens to the believer who knows how to cry to God for mercy. In Luke chapter 18 from verse 35. Luke chapter 18, please, from verse 35. The Bible says, And it came to pass, the story of blind Bartimaeus, that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat at the wayside begging. 36 now. And hearing the multitudes pass by, he asked what it meant. Next verse. The Bible says, And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by, uh -huh, and he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me this is very powerful next verse and the bible says and they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace but he cried so much the more thou son of david have mercy on me god will always respond to the cry of mercy next verse reading to 43 and jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him and when he was come, he asked him, uh -huh, saying, What will thou that I do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Two more verses. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith hath saved thee. Verse 3, Immediately he received his sight. Did you know that Jesus would have just passed and left that person like that? And his condition would have looked like it was the will of God for him to be left there. But he understood that in the economy of God, there is daily bread for everyone. And that you can place a demand even through the cry of mercy. Thou son of David, he said, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, Paul was teaching us that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. He says that we may obtain mercy. You don't obtain mercy where you are. You must take the step to come boldly to the throne of grace by faith. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Deliverance from God comes to the believer as a response to a cry for mercy. Hmm. Cry for mercy. Thou son of David, have mercy upon my family. Have mercy upon my health. Have mercy upon my job. We have taught for a long time in the body of Christ that mercy is for sinners. So most people do not understand the potential of mercy because they don't want to make it look like they are sinners. What are you saying mercy for? Have you done something wrong? Mercy is a mystery in the kingdom. He said above the mercy seat, below the, below the mess above the mercy seat below the cherubims there I will meet with you God meets men at the point of mercy most of us do not understand the power of God's mercy if you can please do listen to my teachings on mercy I have taught extensively about mercy the Bible tells us of the prodigal son that this gentleman began to deteriorate and deplete until he who was once royalty with his father had now been reduced to feed with swine. Here's what he said. The Bible says he came to himself and he said, 
how many hired servants does my father have and I am here feeding with the swine he said I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say unto you father I have sinned against you you see brokenness there and against heaven I am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your slaves then the Bible says he got up and then he started going notice he never met the father at home because once you take the step God will always meet you at the point of your obedience it was as though the father was waiting for him to take that step and then he met him there are many people today who have experienced mighty deliverance from God ten people can be in the same situation financially ministerially and a few of them will come out as if the devil does not exist because somewhere in that equation someone knew how to cry for mercy Lord if you I know that I do not understand financial principles to fund this ministry with integrity but I cry that you are the God of heaven and because your mercies are new every morning show me mercy and that person who may not even know the dynamics of financial prosperity someone can just call him and say God said I should give you a billion and you match the person with the results and they don't add up because mercy has spoken may someone be a beneficiary of the mercy of God in the name of Jesus Christ mercy a response to the cry for mercy when I go to God in prayer, praying for myself and this ministry, I've told you, I don't go to God like a man of God coming to meet a colleague in ministry. I go to him expressing, not out of a standpoint of condemnation, but the depth of my ignorance. Lord, I do not know so many things. You have granted me the grace to come this far. I pray that your mercy will be and remain at the corridors of my destiny. Because outside of your mercy, this world is vicious. Outside of the mercy of God, it takes mercy before favor arrives. It said, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. So the time for favor, the first thing you look for is mercy first before the favor. Are we together? Yes. The mercy of God. There are many easy things that have become hard because we are still standing by our own strength. Trust in the Lord, Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. With all your heart, it says, and lean not unto your own understanding. It says, in all your ways, verse 6, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Verse 7 is a warning to men. Be not wise in your own eyes, it says, but fear the Lord and depart from evil father it is by your mercy i'll be able to raise this child not i know i will raise my child god forbid that my child becomes an armed robber you know how many sincere serious missionaries who invested in raising other people when it got to their own children everything you know to mentor a child properly they did and the child still became an armed robber how do you explain judas being mentored by jesus how do you explain satan as jesus's creation becoming satan are we together now you would think an excellent God should be so flawless in his creation and his all-knowing ability should have pre-informed him that somewhere along the economy of his creation there could be a possibility he would have programmed that in creating them. Yet a third of the angels fell and he still remains God. Yet Satan, his creation has become the arch enemy of his program and his purposes today. Judas, the one who was responsible for the bag, lost three things I've taught you. He lost the money, he lost his place, his bishopric, and he lost his life. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you that it is by the mercy of God that we thrive and excel. You are in ministry here, you are in business. I want you to know that you must perpetually walk in the consciousness that all we are and all that we have is by and large a product of God's mercy. Hallelujah. I told you about a gentleman years ago. 
this guy fasted that's the longest i've seen that i know he fasted for 400 days six to six 400 days i wrapped up the last day with him and after that guy wrapped it up he started suffering and now you are wondering i'm looking at my life and say ah if it is by the investment of spiritual things some of us should not be where we are but lord for your mercy you see the awareness of God, the administration of God's mercy is what brings thanksgiving, genuine thanksgiving. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be? If you left me now, where would I be? There are many of us, based on the kind of training you gave your children, your children should almost be, respectfully speaking, they should not attain unto the level they now have. But the mercy of God caused that when your children left you, God brought prophets and apostles to cover them. They served as midwives so that the adults you now have are not the children. The trajectory of your training should not produce those kind of champions. But the mercy of God, the mercy of God. Some of you, you saw idols eat up your family members and it's not like you were more spiritual one of the ones that died was even a pastor while you were an unbeliever but god meandered you through a crusade and here you are today standing where would i be if you left me now where would i be if you left me now mephibosheth when you get to the palace do not forget that you were that crippled young man at Lodebar. It took the mercy of God for David to bring you. So do not laugh at Ziba. Ziba had 15 sons and not one of them was favored. They were made to walk and serve Mephibosheth. He was a product of a wrong midwife. A midwife made a mistake at his birth and crippled him. He would have remained like that, but God showed him mercy. Mephibosheth, when they bring you to the palace, I know you can act pious. But when you stay a few weeks in the palace, do not allow the memory of where you came from to be so eroded that you lose touch. That was the mistake of Vashti. She forgot that the only reason why she was queen was that she married a king. Not because she was a warrior over 127 provinces. She only married a great man. That's what made her a great woman. And she now created a camp and an empire for herself outside of the influence of the king. And she lost her place. Esther was about to make the same mistake when Mordecai said, don't make that mistake. Haman is about to annihilate the Jews. And don't you sit there and act, don't act. You were a village girl in Shushan. Don't forget the purpose for your attaining that glory. Hear me, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when doors open, be ever conscious of the mercy of God. Do not allow the beauty of the palace to make you look down on others and forget that it was mercy that took you there. Man of God, do not celebrate your ministry and go around sarcastic and being sarcastic and insult people. Shame on this one, small church. Oh, you have forgotten that it takes many years for a building to rise, but in minutes that building can crumble. Listen carefully. You have now become a multi-millionaire. You have now become a billionaire. And you look at everybody and they're, they're like pieces of rag. I'm reminding you that if you want to experience deliverance, you must know how to call for mercy and live in the atmosphere of mercy. My life today is a product of God's mercy. Look at me. This is all of me. There are some things that cannot be done by men except God assists a man. 
Nicodemus came to Jesus in John 3 by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. There are some results men cannot produce, ladies and gentlemen. And in the presence of this plenty, the tendency is that we want to savour the glory and make it look as, it, as though it came as a product of our intelligence. For as long as I am breathing, I will let the world know. It is true that he has helped us to pay our price in various places. But I tell you, it will be foolish of me to stand here and beat my chest to tell you everything you see is a reflection of intelligence. No. I'm the one. You have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. I'm the one saying, You have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Sing, I'm the one. I'm the one saying, You have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. Listen, years ago, I went somewhere. And I went to preach for a man of God. And when I was done preaching, I was headed to his office and I saw a gentleman who was working as part of the protocol. He looked at me and I looked at him and I was in shock. Many years ago on campus, that guy used to be a very strong person, very vibrant and powerful. If you saw that gentleman, you would think he would explode in a global ministry within two years. And here was this, my dear brother, didn't seem like the best of states, seemed like someone who had been beaten by life and frustrated. I was almost tempted to say what happened. Then I remembered. Man, these guys were vibrant. When I say, you know what it means? Campus vibrancy is, is, is with the infancy of spiritual work. So you put your energy to it. You look beyond me, oh. And poured your love. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. Sing, I'm the one, say. I'm the one. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Hear me. Thank God for these great people that God has blessed me with. But I remember the crowd that was in Jesus' ministry. They were the same people who said crucify him. So the larger they are, the more the voices that can say crucify you. You will need to cry for mercy. Cry for mercy. And say, Lord, not by our righteousness, but it is by your grace. The, the, the deliverance power of God comes in response to a cry for mercy apostle right now i do not even know i am a man of god but my family members have not eaten things have gone haywire in my life what you need is the cry for mercy you can cry the mercy of god to come and become a bailout system in your life i can tell you this number two let's hurry up because i want us to pray Deliverance from God comes as a response to heartfelt prayer. Number one is a cry for mercy. Number two, heartfelt prayer. Deliverance from God comes in response to heartfelt prayer. Matthew 26 and 41. Jesus is speaking to Peter and the disciples. 26, 41. He says, watch and pray. We have a teaching on this later on because these two words capture a very deep mystery for surviving the evil of the times. He said, watch and pray. Watch is the product of intelligence and discernment. He says, when it has to do with your safety, there is a place for intelligence and discernment. Watch, be discerning, be vigilant. And then from the information you get from watching, you pray. 
You don't pray amiss when you watch. You watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. He says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. First Peter chapter 5, we read it earlier. Now let's do 8 and 9. First Peter 5, 8 and 9. Be sober and vigilant, he says, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9. It says, whom resist steadfastly in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. In other words, this is not new. So there is a way of escape. You can resist him in the place of prayer. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 19, very powerful scripture. It says, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ. Anything will turn to my salvation through your prayer. Anything at all. The challenges that now befall you as a result of open doors, they can be turned to your salvation like it happened at the prison. What was supposed to be a limitation to the apostles. Are we together now? Yes. Paul and Silas bound as a result of evangelism as a result of promoting the purposes of God the Bible says when they were tied there eventually the jailer and all his family became saved I know that this shall turn to my salvation I don't know who I'm speaking to but what looks like a, a dead end you are saying, Lord, the troubles that came to my life was because I got this job. I want to speak to you that in the place of prayer, there is a technology that converts pain to glory. If you know how to manage pain. I don't watch a lot of TV, but there are times I watch Food Network. And sometimes there are competitions that they have and they give them food that has stayed overnight. And they are expected to do something with that food and still produce a nice meal. Are we together? So they could give them maybe bread, food that has stayed. And it is, they now start thinking of various ways. And they can turn it, you would think it was freshly prepared food. That's how it is. Something that looks like a dead end, programmed by Satan. Even the falling of the pit with prayer can become your advancement into Egypt. Even Potiphar's wife's trouble that led you to the prison can become the final bouncing point before you get to the palace. For I know that this shall turn for my salvation. Every time you are afflicted, according to James 5 and verse 13, it says, is anyone afflicted, let him pray. I can tell you when you pray with understanding, it sustains the ability to produce tremendous power. In fact, the Bible says in Mark now, Mark, um, what was the scripture? Verse 24, Mark eleven twenty-four. 24. It says, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, not if ye pray. There is a relationship between desire, prayer, receiving, and having. Desire, Prayer, receiving, and having. I've told you that you can only have what you have received. If you have not received it, you cannot have it. Receiving is a spiritual technology. And then you have it as a manifestation. God is able to respond to men who travel in the place of prayer. You can access deliverance in the place of prayer. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. I can tell you that you can pray your way out of many troubles. You can pray your way out of many troubles. The moment you begin to discern that the spiritual climate is unfavorable, maybe your job, maybe your business, maybe ministry, all kinds of things are happening. Your, your husband is sick, your child is sick, finance going down. You see, the signature of Satan is discernible. The Bible says the thief cometh not, John 10, 10, but for to kill, to steal and to destroy. You can see his signature immediately. The word of God is the principal tool for discernment. You can see immediately. This is Satan. This is Satan. And you begin to pray. 
he gave us the prayer language as an advantage so that we do not walk with the limitations of the mind the mind can catch up later on but you can begin to engage in prayer strategic prayer it says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous man availed much Luke 18 and verse 1, he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 17, he says to pray without ceasing, be consistent in your prayer. Hallelujah. The moment doors open, that is not the time for your prayer life to go down. That is not the time of laxity. Do not get caught up with the delicacy of the palace that you forget to pray. Let me tell you how to command deliverance. Esther is in a dilemma right now because she needs to meet King Ahasuerus. And the ethics of kings those days were that if you, if you stepped into the king's inner chamber without his invitation and he did not leave the golden censer, you were dead immediately. And he said, Mordecai, I will go. If I perish, I perish. But now is the time to engage. All of us will be on prayer, even with fasting. We know what prayer can do. I will go to meet the king. And she stepped in to meet the king. And the king said, come. He lifted the golden censer. And that became the beginning of the process that would later become the destruction of Mordecai, of Haman. The lifting of Mordecai and the salvation of God's people. Prayer is powerful. Can I tell you, don't fold your arms and act like nothing is happening when darkness seems to loom around your life. There are seasons in your life where you need dedicated time. You should be prayerful all the time. But let me tell you, there are moments in life and destiny, Kairos moments. I have taught you this. When seasons are about to change, there are many things that start happening to you. One is an unusual desire to give. Number two is an unusual desire to pray. These are indices that show you that you are finishing a season and you are entering a new one. When Jesus was about to go to the cross, from the communion table, he went straight to Gethsemane and the Bible says he prayed, repeating the same words. Drew strength from there. And he says, I'm ready. Judas came with all the people and came and kissed him and he was able to build the stamina to survive until he gave up his life on the cross. Can I tell you, if you turn aside in the day of battle, the spiritual diagnosis is that your strength is small. Not because victory is not possible. You need capacity in the spirit. I pray that God will raise CEOs that pray. I pray that God will raise preachers that pray. Pray for me, pray for me is the plague of weak people. Yes, there is a place for intercession, but let me tell you, everybody who is rising must master the mysteries of the altar. You must know how to hold on to the horns of the altar until you command perpetual victory. There are certain burdens of leadership that come upon you if you do not know how to flog out the destinies of people in the place of prayer. You will raise a weak and a defeated people. Prayer is powerful. You lock up yourself. What is happening? In this ministry, it looks like doors of favor is closing. It looks like all kinds of things. We discern the signature of darkness. Father, we call upon you. You are the deliverer. As a family, you find out that you're rising, you're excelling. God is distinguishing you among your, your other people within the bloodline perhaps. And it looks like it's coming with corresponding consequences. Now you have intelligence to know that it is nothing unusual. It is part of the battles that come with growth. It is the implication of open doors. There are giants on every mountain. Don't desire the mountain without holding the tools to fight the giant. Be like Caleb. He said, let us go up at once. We are well able. Hallelujah. You must know that deliverance comes in response to prayer. I can tell you, you can pray negative seasons out of your life. You can pray unfavorable seasons out of your life. There are times you take God seriously and take your destiny seriously and engage in the place of prayer until your light breaks. Are we together? 
prayer does many things. It supplies the fire that exposes evil. There are times you are even confused. You do not even know what is happening. Prayer in partnership with the word is what begins to filter the happenings beyond the realm of the sight to dig deep into the spirit and know what is really happening. Because you see, judging by the flesh, you are going to misjudge so many things. Prayer filters your perceptions until that which is true is what stands. There was a viper hiding in the midst of the wood. But for as long as there was no fire, the viper was comfortable. The moment the wood was lit, the viper was exposed. People of God, the greater you rise, let any other thing, you can outsource any other thing, but not your prayer life. Outsource those who come to wash your cars. Outsource those who come to clean your house because you are busy. Outsource a secretary. Outsource any other person. But in addition to the people who intercede for you, you must independently understand that there is something about heaven's response to your voice. To your voice. To your voice. To your voice. There is no end time ministry that will stand without a proper, consistent, ever-growing investment in the place of prayer. There is no business that will stand. I told you this. You cannot be the same person leading the field, expanding in your business, and you believe that Satan will fold his arms. Have you forgotten in the Bible where a few people bound themselves with fasting and said they would not eat until Paul died? Men can go that far for your downfall. Just because you are not wicked does not mean other people are not wicked. Not all men have faith, ladies and gentlemen. Someone can sit down and say, we see the children in this family rising. Let's see who else rises. The little work that I've done for the Lord in the ministry has shown me many possibilities that I probably would not have believed existed. As far as the administration of evil through the hearts of men is concerned. Ladies and gentlemen, please make sure you are people who understand the dynamics of the altar. My goal is to help you and support you with knowledge and to guide you. But you must pray. You must pray. You must pray. We live in times where you must understand the place of prayer. Don't say, I am weak. Start from where you are. Number three. Deliverance from God is based on a response to praise. Deliverance from God is based on number one, a cry for mercy. Number two is based on heartfelt prayer. Number three, deliverance from God to the saints is based on a response to praise. Psalm 18, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 18, verse 1 to 3. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Verse 2. It says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress. He calls him my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Let's read verse 3 together. Ready? One to read. I will call upon the Lord, it says, who is worthy to be praised. By that formula, hold on. By that formula of calling upon the Lord and adding it with praise, shall I be saved from my enemy? He was revealing a formula that I will call upon the Lord who is deserving of praise. So, by prayer and praise, shall I be saved from my enemy? If you are Paul and Silas and you find yourself in the prison, it is prayer and praise. Exodus chapter 15. Verse 1, please give it to us, let's hurry up. They sang Moses and the children of Israel. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord. Watch the song that they sang. This was after deliverance. Watch this now. They had just been delivered from the Red Sea. I will sing unto the Lord, it says, for he had triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has been thrown into the sea. Verse 2. 
he says the Lord is my strength and my song he has become my salvation he is my God I will prepare him a habitation my father's God and I will exalt him verse 3 the Lord is a man of war the Lord is his name these are people singing sing in the presence of God verse 4 we're reading to 11 he said Pharaoh's chariots and his hosts had he cast into the sea his chosen captains also are drowned in the sea verse 5 the depths have covered them they sank into the bottom of a stone 6 thy right hand O God is become glorious in power I hope you know this is a song thy right hand O God had dashed in pieces the enemy and in the greatness of thy excellency hast thou overthrown them that rose up against thee thou settest forth thy wrath which consumed them as stubble eight and with the blast of thy nostrils the waters were gathered together the flood stood up right in a heap and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea nine the enemy said i will pursue i will overtake i will divide the spoil my loss shall be satisfied upon them i will draw my sword my hand shall destroy them verse 10 it says thou didst blow with thy wind the sea covered them they sank as leads in the mighty waters who is like unto thee O god among the gods who is like thee glorious in holiness read the remaining part fearful in praises as a result doing wonders god is fearful in praises and the moment he arises as that warrior, the next thing you see are his wonders. Who is like unto thee, O God, among the gods? It says, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises. Listen carefully. Ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you by the power of the Holy Spirit, and I can tell you from the integrity of scripture and experience, praise is a deep mystery that is able to overturn possibilities and grant the be insist that the believer stands at the point of victory these are the forces of the spirit that help and guide men now let's finish the scripture that we left up in acts chapter 16 we read down to 24 now let's start 25 at this point paul and silas are in prison then the bible says at midnight paul and silas prayed is that in your bible and they sang praises unto God. It was so loud the prisoners heard them. Watch the God of heaven now. Suddenly, Shibaka so prandiki payata. Ah, this is someone's testimony. Suddenly, it says there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all doors were opened. And everyone's bands were loosed read on 27 and the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open he drew his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had fled 28 but Paul cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm we are all here 29 then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas here it is he brought them out and said Silas what must I do to be saved anything can turn for your salvation when you know how to engage the mercy of God you know how to engage prayer and you know how to engage praise 31 he says they said unto him believe on the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved and thy house and they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house reading to 34 and he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes this was the jailer and was baptized and he and all his straight away the last verse and when he had brought them into his house he said meet before them and rejoiced believing in God with all his house for we know that all things walk together not for everybody to them that love the Lord and to those who are the called according to his purposes 
So Jesus is teaching the disciples prophetically, not just theologically. He's teaching them because their lives and their faith adventures will be plagued with many, many challenges that come with open doors. And he said in your prayer, the moment daily bread begins to come, the moment doors and dimensions both in the spirit and in life start getting opened you must master the art of mercy you must master prayer you must master praise these mysteries you must use to surround yourself with like chariots perpetually you are one who walks in consciousness of god's mercy you are one who walks in consciousness of the ministry of prayer that you can lock your office as a CEO and dedicate 30 minutes and you are praying. And there is a board meeting that is coming with all kinds of people coming from across the globe. You would think all that you would need is brain work. Some of the people coming for that meetings are coming with their charms and mediums like Rachel. Remember when Rachel was leaving the house of Laban, she took the gods of her fathers with her. Just because you see people wearing suit or dressing nice, they, all their gods, they, their fraternities with dark powers, negotiating the destinies of men upon the table of greatness. You cannot go there being casual. Hear me. Many of you, God wants to lift you. You are trusting God to become a kingdom financier. Have you heard about the king of Tyre? The one who sits upon the mountain of commerce of the earth. You cannot come and transact business except you sell your soul. He did that to Jesus. There is a level of wealth you cannot attain unto just by buying and selling. Believe me, if you are in this kingdom, the person speaking to you is not in ignorance. By the grace of God, I know a bit about finances. I can tell you, there are certain heights in the spirit. It is not buying and selling that takes you there. There is a covenant transaction between men and spirits. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life. That even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.